Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, I'm really sorry I'm doing this in English. Uh, I did learn sort of German, um, but it would be painful if I tried this in German. And I'll give you an example of why. A, a couple of years ago, I did uh, the Lange Nacht der Wissenschaft, and I tried to do it in German. And I was talking about these camera traps that I'm going to talk about tonight. And I, t I was talking about how you get great photos with them. And then I said, Und ich habe sehr viele, sehr gut nacht photos. <laughs> and I didn't know what that word was in German. I thought that meant like guten nacht. <laughs> um, and everybody laughed and I didn't know why. And I carried on and I said it like <laughs> numerous times. Um, so it was memorable, but not very accurate, so. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about my research on chimpanzees. So this was my first ever job as a scientist, and I was out in the Republic of Guinea. So not Papua New Guinea, not Equatorial Guinea, not Guinea-Bissau. It's the Guinea that only this woman here knows about. Um, thank you. I'm glad one person did. And it's beside the Ivory Coast. And it's one of the poorest um, countries in the world. And it also has some of the last strongholds of the West African chimpanzee. And what we were doing was we were stalking these chimpanzees. We were trying to figure out anything and everything that we could about this community. They were living in between villages. And uh, there was mining that was going to be happening close by. So we wanted to know where were they and what were they up to. They'd never been studied before. And there's me um, with my team, who I'm supposed to be leading, but they all know way more about this landscape than I do. So I can analyze chimp populations at my computer back in Europe, but I have no bloody idea what I'm doing. But thankfully, this guide here to the left, his name is Mamadou Aliouba. And he's one of the most talented people I'd ever worked with in my life. So he could spot chimpanzee hair on the forest floor. He actually found chimp pee one day underneath a nest. Um, he could just find anything and everything to do with chimps. So he was fantastic. And these chimps weren't habituated to humans. So that means that we couldn't just watch them. We had to kind of follow them and pick up clues wherever we could. So this one day, we came upon this tree here. And it doesn't look too unusual to me. I certainly would have passed it by. But Mamadou notices there's some markings on the tree that you can't even see on this screen. That's how sort of innocuous they were. But a close-up, you still can't really see it. So he notices some pieces of bark missing from the tree. And the others in the group were like, ah, it's nothing. It's just cows or it's teenagers. But Mamadou had a hunch. And he thought it might be chimpanzee related. And when this guy, this talented guy, that he can spot chimps kilometers away when we couldn't even find them with our binoculars, when he has a hunch, you trust that hunch. So we had these camera traps. And um, we had a limited number of these. But we decided, myself and Lucy Deverne, who is the other foreign researcher in the group, that we would sacrifice one to trust Mamadou and put a trap there. And they're great um, cameras. You can take naked pictures with them. Uh, you can also take nighttime pictures, and you can take videos. Um, what you cannot do if you're in a hurry in the airport is bring it through security, because it looks exactly like a bomb <laughs> when you go through. <laughs> and I learned that the hard way. Um, and so I had to talk to the guy for a really long time. <laughs> Um, and so we uh, set up a camera trap here, and um, they're motion activated, so they'll sense any movement in front of the camera. And what this means was normally we would just get a lot of really long videos of cows, <laughs> like licking the camera, moving it about, just generally messing up our entire plan. Um, but yet still, whenever you set up a camera trap, you do still get excited, because you never know what you're going to find. You're probably going to find more of that, but you still never know, right? So after a couple of weeks, it's still looking the camera, um, we went back to this spot with our mystery tree to see if we'd found anything. And then we come back to camp with the memory stick, plug it into the laptop, and we all crowd around to watch. And what we found was pretty cool, actually. So, this is our tree up here. 
Um, it has been, the camera has been knocked by something previously, but we're still catching the tree. And so here we see one chimp approaching the tree, kind of looking around and leaving. And another chimp is about to come in, and you can tell he's a male chimp because male chimps have huge balls. And <laughs> even with this pixelation, you can see his balls as he walks through there. Um, quite impressive. And what he does, <laughs> they really are huge, I'm telling you. And what he does is he picks up an equally impressive rock, he flings it at the tree, and you can see there he's pantooting. Um, there's no sound on these videos because we didn't have a great budget. But a chimp pantoot, um, it sounds, it's, okay, I'll just do it. It goes, <laughs> and that's what it is. And uh, so, thank you. So, chimps do this for a number of reasons, and one of the reasons is they might be displaying. And so, we thought, what the hell is this? We've never seen this before. Um, and you might think, all right, I've seen primates throwing stones in the zoo. This isn't a big deal. True, but what these chimps were doing when we searched across the entire region was they were picking out specific trees and only doing it there, repeatedly at the same sites. And so you get these piles of stones inside the tree. And you also often have this pant hoot when the chimp is throwing the stone at the tree. Um, and so we were a bit flabbergasted. We didn't know what it was. We thought maybe it's part of this male display to look big and strong and impressive for the lady chimps. Um, maybe it's a form of communication. So chimps will often drum on the roots of large trees. And there weren't too many roots with large, sorry, trees with large roots. Um, so there weren't too many trees with large roots in this area. So maybe they were doing this as a form of sound propagation. So the drumming is kind of like Morse code where they can communicate long distance. So we thought maybe it's communication. Um, but we also found that some of the chimps were quietly just kind of hitting the stone very lightly against the tree. This will play in a second. And then sort of placing it inside the crevice. And this is a juvenile chimp, so he, he's not displaying. So other researchers in the group thought maybe it's a kind of a landmarking where chimps mark out the borders of their territory, similar to how um, ancient human civilizations did. So there's a number of theories as to what this mysterious behavior is. And we had over 80 researchers working across Africa to try and figure out where chimps were doing this and why. And this resulted in a paper in uh, Nature Scientific Reports. And you're a really laughy audience. I don't know why you're laughing at that. Now I'm nervous. Um, it was a good paper, all right. Um, <laughs> And, but the thing is, it was actually, it was, you can read the first line and it, it wasn't very easy to digest. So, the study of the archaeological remains of fossil hominins must rely on reconstructions, blah, 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 blah. And so, I wanted to write a, an article to really talk about the story of how this guide discovered the behavior, because he didn't get a look in on this paper, and also talk about chimp conservation, because chimps are going extinct in the wild. And this paper also didn't go into this. And so... I wrote um, for The Conversation, which is a great online um, article where scientists can write about their research. And I wrote about this behavior and what it could mean. And um, there's a funny thing about this behavior. So when you uh, find the sites, you find these piles of stones. And it kind of also resembles human sacred sites. And so after spending paragraphs describing this behavior, I also included this one line about maybe we found evidence of <laughs> sacred trees. Is, all right, thank you. <laughs> and that was a mistake. My article got picked up and instead turned into, is this proof chimps believe in God? <laughs> it was awful. It was a mess and it kept going. And they quoted me, they fake interviewed me, yet Kyo stuck to her guns. And they took that one line that I written and completely spun it out of control. And it turned out to be one of the sillier conclusions drawn from solid scientific research in a very long time, which is true and more or less kind of my fault for that one flippant remark. But I did carry on communicating my research because 
it's too important not to. We've lost 80% of West African chimps population in just the past 25 years. And if we don't do more to conserve them, then we will see them go extinct in the wild, along with many other species. So if you care about our magnificent world, which I hope you do, and all of the species that live in it, I encourage you to check out a couple of different things. One is, if you care about it as much as he cares about screaming, um, <laughs> Extinction Rebellion is a great site where um, you can get involved and go to protests to make governments take action on climate change and biodiversity, and also chimpanzee.org where you can volunteer and uh, take camera trap footage and help us out to take it. Thank you very much.